Hello everybody and welcome back to a special weekend edition where we cover stock, commodity and crypto markets right now, including the earnings for the stock market for the week ahead and our thoughts on the Federal Reserve coming into no doubt a very large rate hike here for the week ahead. We've got statistically likely areas that the market should go to and some that people won't want to be discussing. But the problem is that we've just closed or gotten close to closing underneath one of the biggest supports that we've seen in some time. Will this market collapse? Stay tuned. We're going to talk about it right now. Well, welcome back everyone to the special weekend edition here and we need to start by talking about the month end so as we mentioned it's been a pretty rough month and s p 500 has obviously booked one of the worst four month periods since 1939 things really aren't getting any better for the markets People like Warren Buffett though are still purchasing. Obviously he's increased his Chevron bet that is in energy and we've also seen him place positions that are strategically minded such as Activision, etc. And of course the Activision merger split he did incredibly well on. So Buffett always has that famous saying of of course when other people are being fearful you want to be greedy and he potentially is starting to think about disposing of some of that cash and buying into certain assets and he is already doing so let's think about fear and greed index it's down to a 27 again so we're not in extreme fear just yet but we're getting very very close to that and of course when there is extreme fear and we're hitting something like a support in markets Possibly we might look at a relief rally or some kind of relief movement. Let's talk about the market as a whole on Friday. It was brutal. I mean, you can see it here. It's a sea of red and certain stocks. I mean, big, big stocks like Amazon were down 14%. I mean, that's an incredible move on something like Amazon. I don't think we've seen that in quite some time. And it came across the board in every single one of the big tech. And it's why we've been very cautious here in technology over really 2022. This is a trader's year. That is that it's up, down and all around. And there's going to be huge relief rallies and there's going to be huge sell-offs because we always expected a double dip in something like a midterm year. And we might even have another couple of rallies followed by sell-offs that are quite brutal. So be careful out there. Sector rotation is key to understanding what the market's doing. And we'll take a look at that very, very soon. So here we have the market and what happened at relief rallied in the morning, sold off after the hour of power. Of course, retail traders at resistance. We'll look at that a little bit later. And then it sold off through the day, showing that Wall Street were prepared to really sell it through the whole entirety of the session. But they popped it early to allow people to buy in as much as possible, thinking there was relief there. It was a very sneaky move. If you think about the sectors, almost every well, everything was down, but obviously the more defensive sectors were up here. And XLY consumer discretionary was down incredibly hard, 5% in terms of coverage. We'll actually take a look at one of the lead indicators that I use in markets, and it shows the American consumer throughout today's video. Obviously, one third of the American economy is the consumer, two thirds is services. So it's really important to be able to see that in the market. And I'll give you a visual representation of how to do that. That's taken from our mentoring course, and I think it will help people to maybe clean up their ideas in the future about when there's risk on and risk off in the markets to a degree using one of these leads. And if you can start to conceptualize it this way, it will help you out. Jets, XLP, XLE, XLU, they've been the story of the last month. So this is a month of sector rotation and you'll notice it was mostly all horribly down, but there were some sectors such as Jets and consumer staples that were still up for the sessions. And that's because really what this is, is markets moving into something they feel a little bit more comfortable in and money flow is basically hunkering down. If anything goes into XLP and XLU, you usually know that there's a huge amount of defensive bets being played and they're going to be selling, of course, the risky assets. And that's what they have done. And we've been covering a lot of that on this channel, obviously. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in more of that type of stuff. S&P 500 worst performance through 82 trading days. As we mentioned, this is where it's at. This is what tends to happen after and then of course, what happens for the price return for the full year. So there are a couple of scary stats here. One of them is price return for the full year tends to actually be mostly red. The thing that I guess is positive is we usually do see rallies from the lows. That is, we end up having possibly even lower moves because you can tell here, 
but we end up getting relief rallies at some point that really pulls that market straight back up and starts to look a little bit better. Will that happen in 2022? I would guess that we will have some serious relief rallies at some point. Now, percentage of internal damage in the NASDAQ, how bad is it? Well, it's not good really. I mean, percentage members down 50%, you can see it's quite high. Percentage members down 75%. Now that's where things are getting really crazy. Look at this, this reading has only really been hit twice before, not even during the 2020 rise, a 2020 crash did it get that bad. We have here 2008, 2009, and really a few of these kind of spikes that happen after the dot-com boom. So we have a lot of really, really, really sold off companies. And obviously we've got the old guard, the big ones holding up. That is the Googles, the Apples, the Amazons up until recently, they were all holding a lot better than the rest of them. And I think if these start to fall, that is Apple, Amazon, Google, and we'll take a look at those really fall, I mean, that's when you're in trouble with the NASDAQ. But you can see here that the actual internal damage is pretty severe through the back end of the top 100 on the NASDAQ. Disposable incomes also are falling at a record pace. This is not good for the American consumer. Obviously, it's hitting Amazon already. We've been talking about this a little bit. It doesn't have a strong correlation with really recessions. As you can see, when you look at a number like this, it does decline into recessions, but this is just some seriously huge swings. And I think that's a huge component of it. Stimulus checks, etc. massive swing, stimulus coming off. That's where we're at right now. If we're talking about like forward predictions and things like that, Jeremy Grantham here, he basically has his prediction for S&P 500 fair value. And if you want to look, I mean, he's obviously he's talked about this a lot. He reckons 2,500 is the level. So that's another 48% from now. Now I'm not here to scare you with that. I just think it's interesting that that's what his target is currently sitting at. On terms of average targets, you usually expect around 14 to 15% with the worst case being 20%. We'll talk about that more. Remember, it's all S&P 500 related. S&P 500 is the big market. That's the one we need to be looking at in these markets as much as we can. Now, we mentioned before that there are some statistical things that become more likely once you move below the 50 exponential moving average. And if we scroll down here throughout all of really stock market history, you'll notice there's an 85% call on the 100 SMA, we'll take on the weekly this is. We'll take a look at that later. There's also a coin flip chance or a bit better than coin flip chance, we go to the 200 SMA. So we'll take a look at both of those when we do our S&P 500 analysis a little bit later. But so far, it seems on course to hit that 100 SMA, maybe even before, you know, who knows, the Fed meeting, that's gonna be something there. Another thing that people mention all the time is, well, if we're in some kind of recession here and the market's about to destroy itself, did we just see a return to normal? Arguably, absolutely. And have we entered some kind of really fearful capitulation stage? Now, if we have, this is where things get really, really nasty. And I know that no one's going to want to hear that, but if we have entered and we don't rally probably off the 100 or somewhere around that level, then we could be in for some serious fear and capitulation. I know we think we've already seen it, but remember when markets sell off, they get incredibly aggressive. So if someone like Jeremy's prediction of the markets comes true, it could be even worse. And I think that's why it's really a trader's year as much as possible. And if you're investing, obviously people would be looking more at DCAing and those types of strategies instead. And remember tech is not currently the market still that anyone should be looking at until we know that there's something going on with that US 10 year, that the US 10 year and inflation are currently declining because tech will not do well while the US 10 year is still climbing at record speeds. The beats rate for the earnings season, is it that bad for the US? Not really, beats rate 77%, beats 542, misses 160. So it's not as bad as everyone thinks in terms of earnings. Generally speaking, they've been doing okay, but the problem is there's such high valuations, the market doesn't really care. And that's the issue here with earnings. Trying to guess which way the market's gonna go with it is not easy. Instead, we should be reactionary as traders. That is, look for the traps that Wall Street is setting or the composite man, as Wyckoff like to call it. And then, of course, once we see those traps being set, we can trade with them, not against them. And that's one of the best strategies if you know what you're doing in the markets. Unfortunately, discipline pays in these markets and you've got to realize that sometimes it's good to trade, 
sometimes you are literally flipping a coin and you can't always read exactly what's going to be going on each day and each week until you know then you know may 2nd 2022 in terms of the starting of the earnings week we've got some big names here we've got amd airbnb we've got shop as well block a lot of hyper stocks in this week uh, draft kings on friday so these types of stocks they're going to move let's say the hyper market now that's one of the most beaten down markets and I, I think the earnings that we start to see out of that which so far have been not so much great earnings but definitely pushing the market up up before or after the earnings because they've pushed their slam so far down so that they really have been a little bit more positive than i guess you would suspect in terms of it's not a great result but the market is belting itself so hard that they're better than the expectations and that's something that you might want to look at if you're looking at options into these events will they beat because the market has belted those stocks so far down certainly possible now the vix is rising into something like the fomc event now there are some things here to remember generally during the fomc day we don't see the vix rise it usually falls actually <clears throat> It generally rises into the event. We mentioned this last week and we're starting to approach what we call like a huge fear level, basically around 35 to 40. We get this massive fear. That's usually where we start to see some form of relief rally. Now, this is completely contrary to what a lot of people believe, but buying fear sometimes is the way to go. It's a very difficult strategy and without proper risk management, you need to be very careful. But we are about to go into what's historically a large fear zone. That is a 35 to 40 reading. And some people look at that with support and try to obviously purchase those events. Be careful out there, but VIX is set to rise, especially if we go lower here in the markets. And then it'll turn around just as quickly. The US 10 year continues to rise here. We were talking about the 3%. Obviously, we're getting close to that rate. We didn't quite hit it yet, 298 and this remains one of the key things into the Fed meeting that the market's going to be looking at. As you can see, the US 10 year has been on a ballistic run now for all of 2022. And I think this is a huge portion of why the stock market, especially the tech market, is not doing so well. It's not correlated well with the US 10 year. Now, there are a lot of sectors that are not correlated well here, but some that are correlated well would be things like energy, would be things like metals and mining. And it's a huge reason why they've done so well. So remember the 10 year is super important. Continue to follow the channel if you're interested, subscribe because we will cover the 10 year in a lot more detail in the future and really discuss how that works. And it's a big part of obviously our mentoring and things like that. Let's talk about the dollar index that's hitting a big resistance here. Now the flight to safety has been significant as per usual. It happens into the Fed event. That is, it doesn't happen after the Fed. And then people are left scratching their head. Well, what happened to the DXY even if they raise rates? Remember the reason why the dollar index has already flown into the FOMC. So I would guess, and this is a guess more than anything else, that possibly we've seen the move into the Fed. And if we obviously, if we break through here, it's going to be significant, but this is now hitting a resistance. And you could even see a little bit of a blow off here where it takes a cooling effect and then maybe comes back up. So watch this with the VIX, because as we know, if the dollar index is rising, that's a flight to safety. That money then rotates out potentially back into the stock market, creates some kind of rally. And then of course the, the rally may be sold off. But yeah, dollar index hitting a resistance ahead of the Fed. It's where we expect it to be and currently in an incredibly strong uptrend, but very far away now from things like the 20 moving average. So if you're still bullish DXY, it's theoretically hit its first take profit. I would wait and see past this event. That's the best thing to do. PCC hits the big high here. Now we saw that hit 21st of Jan, then we saw some further sell off. And then of course we saw relief rallies. So look at this, very similar, huge PCC ratio. Let's zoom this out. That is puts entered into the market. Very rare to hit these levels. And often when we hit huge levels like this, we're starting to potentially bottom in the market. So be careful here with the put call ratio. I'll continue to watch this, but when everyone's fearful, and especially if we hit something on the S&P 500, that could be where we've got a relief rally. And I think this is gonna be a day by day by day watching event through these markets. 
gold over here, you'll notice that it's declined. Uh, it's, it's kind of rallied through that 1896. It had a bit of a rally, came up to the 1920. Great, take profit if you're in that rally through that zone. Congrats to you. It's pretty unclear. It's rejected, which is not a good sign. If you now get a bullish move above 1920 again, that is it snaps this, that'll be hugely bullish. We'll come back to it. But yeah, unclear here on what gold wants to do next. I think it's confused again. And when it's confused, you don't necessarily want to be in it. You'll notice it's just sitting on that weekly 20 support and previous resistances. US oil continues to look really weak, series of lower highs as we suspected. Oil's been the better trade, so it's been natural gas in the last month. This has been where the better money's been made. We have covered it in a lot of detail. We obviously covered the relief rally, we covered the blow off, uh, we covered the next relief rally, and now I think it looks weaker than stronger. And what I mean by that is it looks like it's probably going to decline. It's not a strong trade just yet in terms of shorting, but it does look like it might decline, come back down, and if it gets through these 93 lows, then of course at this stage, oil looks to be really declining for a little bit longer. It doesn't necessarily mean that all the stocks are gonna fall, but the actual commodity itself is, is falling down. So I promised you guys a bit of a key indicator, and that is that we have an indicator that shows us whether the market is fearful or strong in terms of risk on risk off from the American consumer. And it's a pretty simple one, but when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Consumer discretionary, that is XLY, versus consumer staples, which is XLP. What's that telling us? Disposable income spending, that is really whether people are feeling rich versus people tightening up and feeling poor. And remember, this is actually showing itself in the market. So what's that telling us right now? Well, since November last year, it's been declining. We saw that rally where we had we had a little bit of an increase in the risk on from the American consumer. And then that rally has now been sold off very significantly over the last week. And this is something that you can watch and you'll notice that it went very, very well after, of course, the pandemic and the stimulus. Why? Because stimulus checks came in, stimulus checks helping consumer discretionary, people feel rich, markets going up, people feel even more rich, it's all good. Right now though, the market's been hunkering in, it's been rotating into staples for quite some time. And that's now broken through even the 2018 highs here. So where could it go? Well, it could go down to like a 1.9, it obviously could turn at any point, but this is something that we're looking for. We wanna turn in this type of market, this type of rotation to show us that the markets have not only recovered, but they've recovered in such a way that the market is rotating into those areas and really showing us that they believe risk is back on in the markets. At this stage, it's not according to XLY, XLP. Let's now move over to some other stuff. We've got Tesla here, still looking pretty weak. Obviously, Elon selling a lot of stock here. When it got through that 975, it's probably the best short, but it was super aggressive because Elon stole lots of stock into it to buy Twitter. Every rally so far being met by sell, it got through that 920, instantly rejected it and sold into the close. Look, Tesla doesn't look positive here on the charts. If you look at it on a weekly or anything like that, it's kind of negative. I could see it retapping like a 785, 800 before it considers going back up. So be very careful here. But a break underneath this 800, especially with the weekly close, could be dismal. Because at that point, where's the next support level? 550. So be careful here, guys. We'll follow it during the week. We'll have to come back to Tesla when we see some more information opened. Let's move over to Amazon. Now, a lot of people will probably be correctly calling this as, well, is that some kind of Wyckoff distribution, Tom? The upward thrusts here, the UTAD, is this really the end for one of the giants? Well, the problem is this distribution is through all of the big stocks, and we've been seeing it now for a while. It's rallied a few times, obviously, here you know, really rallied through, had a go, and then just sold off with that rejection wick. And now the earnings is out, it's quickly flying through all of this this kind of dead zone. Remember, it rallied so heavily here that now the market's trying to push it down. And I could actually see like a 2200 or even a 2050 or something on Amazon moving forward. And that's the problem. Like when you look at this on a chart, Where's the next support? Is it right here? It's not very good if that is the support. And is the second support sitting down here? 
it seems more likely. Obviously, the rest of the market will have to go with it, but that is where where we're looking. Unless the other stocks hold up, that's kind of where we're looking. Another distribution here in Apple, it's starting to become plain as day that Apple also is suffering from a very similar kind of fate. And you'll notice as well that some of the trend lines, like let's say the trend line that goes through here and also the trend line that goes through here are starting to get put under a lot of pressure. Now, remember trend lines, people buy them because they see them in the markets. Fair enough. If you know what you're looking for, trend lines can be good. But if we start to sell underneath these, that's triggering shorts off a distribution in Apple. And Apple looks not great on the charts unless it bounces. So we've got here, you know, a trend line followed by another trend line underneath. And if we breach underneath those, things really start to get hairy. Look at the example here for Nvidia in terms of a trend line that came all the way back from 2020. We've busted underneath that and now it looks like we're selling. Again, where does this go? Is it going into a 155, 160? At this stage, without seeing any kind of recovery path, that seems more likely than the bullish kind of side. And that's that's some of the problems. Now, we did mention that we'd also look at some other sectors. Jets has been one of the favorites for the year. Obviously, we're looking for it to breach this trend line. And it did on the daily. It hasn't done so on the weekly. This is one of those ones where if you understand movement and flow, you're looking to scale into these types of positions. So here, of course, is one of those max pain style scenarios. We've got support, support, bust down and then comes back through. I'm still positive on jets here, even though the market is so negative. And most of that is because if you look at jets versus something like VT, you'll notice our performance of this sector versus the market. So clear flow coming in here in in compared to the rest of the market and in some ways already breaching in terms of relative performance. So depending on how you took it and how you look at markets, it is actually doing better than expected. And Jets currently, we need that weekly close above and a turnaround. So we'll have to see whether it can do it while the market's looking so shaky. It's only one very, very small sector in the rest of the overall field. DAX still hasn't broken through the downward trend. Obviously, that's a huge sign of risk on. We'll be watching that. We want that trend line that's currently short, 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 short to be broken. It closed right around 13.9, but it's not enough to go off. So DAX didn't show us enough positive action. IWM looked, frankly, absolutely terrible on the close. This is the small caps, and many people say it leads the market, and it looks really bad, guys. Not only did we have, obviously, that Wyckoff distribution that we talked about over here, but then it's come up, rallied, failed to bust quite a few times, which has been a big problem for it. And now we're underneath the previous supports. So the problem here is like the rest of the market, we're in kind of a very, very tough zone. Unless this turns out to be some kind of false break and it rallies and it gets above here. And then we need to wait for that. We have to get that confirmation. It's looking like this market's coming back down to this 170 area. And that's going to be you know, very, very solid. That 170 to 173 area very solid here for IWM purchasing. But yeah, it's in no-go land. Could you really buy that market right now? It would be tough from a technical perspective. It looks short, short, short with a 2050 cross on the weekly. Nothing looks good and only the Fed could potentially reverse a market like this. SPY versus QQQ, another comparison here just to show you what's going on. Relative rotation, obviously, of the SPY is positive versus QQQ. And this looks again like a Wyckoff accumulation almost on a chart like this. A lot of this is just really showing you that during times of higher inflation, it's not all about tech. Remember SPY, I've not equal weighted it here. If I put like something like RSP versus QQQ. So if I did something like that, you'll notice that it's looking very, very similar. But again, it's just showing you that there's been a rotation through, that is a rotation through the market into the more defensive sectors, into the more inflation-led sectors. If I put this out like a week into a month, take, take a look at this. This has been an amazingly big trend change that's about to occur here. Look at this. Last time, 2003, up until the GFC, we saw raising of the rates. Obviously, our performance here of the RSP equal weight versus the QQQ. This time around, 
we've then seen pretty much what 12 14 years of of decline from that so nasdaq and tech has really outperformed and now we're sitting here are we about to go into you know another period of time where all of the other sectors other than tech continue to outperform i'm not necessarily sure on that but based on these charts you can tell the market is thinking along those lines still even as we speak right now even with tech as cheap as it's becoming cheap inverted commas nasdaq it's underneath the tweezer this is not a good sign again for the markets big big rejection here huge close on the monthly that's again negative is the next stop eleven thousand for the nasdaq well it certainly could be expect relief rallies throughout though whatever happens here there will be a relief rally and it will be significant and if the question then becomes is did they sell it because the markets are now underneath previous supports if we get relief rallies past 13.5 so that's our resistance here on the nasdaq i think at that point we actually see possibly even more relief and then that's possibly followed by big sell-offs that come through the market doesn't just get down here for no reason it it either has trapped everybody into thinking short and then it will relief and then we can buy it through the next rallies obviously past this point it's absolutely risk on tick 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 that's our clear resistance now because that'll be massive accumulation but at this point it's more negative than positive so if it sells off aggressively hits the 100 sma which we'll look at on the s p 500 then rallies up what do we expect to happen here sell that rally and then if it goes down again could we be going towards eleven thousand? that would be pretty terrible but certainly very possible s p 500 this is where it's at right down there at the 4131 the next likely area is the 100 sma that is this yellow line here around that 4050 4000 i think 4000 becomes pretty pretty possible here in the markets ahead of the fed last time we saw the fed raise rates the market rallied off it this time I have a feeling that we might see something very, very similar. But again, you want to see the results in the market. Watch the market. If the market starts rallying off that result, possibly that's your time to jump in. But remember, 2022 is still the trader's year. That's still what we're looking at here. If we scroll back through time, the reason why the 100 is so important is look at this. If we think about it, 100, 100 underneath the 50, 100, 100 broken, 200, 200. So if we get a 200 reading, which I mentioned was one of the worst case scenarios, by the time it gets down there, the 200 will be higher. It's kind of pushing towards like a 3600 on the S&P 500. Now, a lot of people probably don't want that. Fair enough. Not even I want something that low. But uh, yeah, that's what a lot of bears are now starting to call towards. This becomes likely. Relief off this area becomes very likely. And then the question mark is really if this occurs do we bust straight through that or are we going to go bam to a new low new low after the 4000 if we do hit this would be absolutely horrific so the fed's result has got a lot weighted on it right now the monthly looks really really bad on the s p 500 again putting pressure on that 20 moving average putting pressure on the previous purchase zones and if it can't relief rally let's say falls before the fed and the relief rally showing max pain I'm not sure what's going on for these markets next. Max Payne is sitting at 437 this week so far. That's going to change as the options market opens and the Fed comes out. So we'll keep following that. But uh, yeah, these are what we're looking at in the markets at this stage. Let's move over to Bitcoin price after halvings. As we know, we're in a bit of a crypto winter. It's actually following the last couple of times pretty similarly. Crypto falls on the weekend at the moment. So if this continues to happen and we get that drop off around that 850 days or even earlier remember at this point when there's everyone doesn't believe in it anymore possibly that's where people will come back in and start to think well maybe i should buy it for the next halving result maybe consider that when you're looking at it in the future bitcoin here on the weekend chart still looking weak nothing good here from it it needs risk on in the markets in terms of the nasdaq that's not happening and we move over to btc shorts this is a big reason right these shorters have continued to push higher and this is why we've been cautioning against buying bitcoin here they've just kept shorting that is the whales aren't confident currently in this follow us over at fx evolution on twitter if you've been enjoying our videos and everything we've been doing here and remember we've got the fomc statement funds rate here 2 p.m 
New York time and the press conference at 2.30. That's sure to be a fireworks event for the markets. And we expect probably VIX to drop after that event generally. But coming into it, VIX may be higher. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. Give us a like. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.